Welcome to Concussion Talk Podcast. My name is Nick Mercer. I write Concussion Talk. www.concussiontalk.com This is episode 22, and I'll be talking to Jamie Cudmore. Jamie played professional rugby for Oyonnax in France and has played on Team Canada since 2002, most recently as team captain in, the, in one of his four World Cups. Due to his recent concussions, Jamie's wife and he have set up a foundation called Rugby Safety Network, which aims to increase awareness and education around concussions in rugby. I spoke to Jamie over the phone from France, so I apologize in advance for the poor audio quality. Okay, I'm talking to Jamie Cudmore of second row of Team Oyonnax in France and second row captain of Team Canada Rugby. And I will now get him to talk about himself and just him and, and what and his successes with his teams professionally and internationally. So, Jamie? Hey, Nick. Um, yeah, I've uh, been over in France uh, for about 15 years here now. Um, I've uh, had a huge opportunity to play, um, to represent Canada over the years. Uh, with, being uh, lucky enough to be involved in four World Cups, uh, play for Canada numerous times in over the last few years, having the honor of captaining them. Um, in terms of uh, my European uh, career, it's been uh, a long career with three different teams because I started in Grenoble back in 2003. Uh, before that, was Finesse and then uh, moved to Clermont Ferrand, where I had the, the large part of my success. Uh, we managed to win the French Championship in 2010, uh, the European Cup in 2007, and then two other European finalists medals in, uh, in 2013 and 2015. Um, so I've had a, a very long, great career uh, here, in, uh, here in France, and uh, now I've uh, moved to a new club, Arnax, uh this last uh, season. And uh, we've gone down a division, but... Um, it's still uh, some good rugby. We're looking to uh, bring the team back up in the top division. And, uh, um, yeah, we're really enjoying ourselves. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, so I know you, you mentioned to me that you live near Geneva, Switzerland, where you have formed your rugby safety network. So could you just say, where, so where is that? And how, when did you form it? And how, so how long has it been formed? When and, wh- and why did you form it? Just briefly. Was an uh, initiative of myself and my wife Jennifer. After uh, I had suffered some pretty bad uh, post concussion problems uh, two years ago, after the uh, semi final and the final of the uh, of the Champions Cup here in Europe, um, there's uh, some great things being done around concussion, especially in Canada with Roland's Law coming through. Um, the Rugby Canada Play Smart program, which is uh, is very progressive and very uh, very conscious of the, the the problem that concussions pose, and definitely uh, the proper ways on how to deal with deal with the symptoms and the, and, and the dangers during um, during play. Um, I'm very unfortunate that in, in France, especially, there's nothing like that. Um, it's very much uh, throw a bit of water on your neck and get get the player back out there, especially in the pro in the pro leagues. Um, the players are are used to basically to the to the end of the rope and then cast away and uh, if, if the player is no longer performing well uh, the teams will go off and, and find uh, somebody else to, to fill their space so um, you know after uh, some, some tough uh, some really tough times for me the last uh, last few years um, we said this has got to stop and we figured the best way uh, by doing that would be creating the rugby safety network and really focusing on education uh, in the rugby schools and rugby clubs, uh, amateur and, and in pro, um, and really spreading knowledge as to as to dangers, how to uh, how to recover from concussion, how to prevent, um, and really just uh, try to educate more uh, around the whole issue. Because uh, as you see in North America, people have done a lot of great work. You know, Sidney Crosby with his uh, foundation is getting a lot of education out there for, for kids uh, who, uh, who play contact sports and even who don't. Um, and uh, that's exactly uh, the type of thing that we're trying to develop here for uh, rugby in France. Okay, so, uh, so your concussions, 
When when did you when do you think you had your first one? Do you, do you remember it, any of them? And um, yeah, I've heard a few uh, over the years. Um, you know, when you play a contact sport, you're bound to yeah. get a few. And um, you know, when I was younger, I did a lot of boxing. I did a lot of skiing um, and just kind of looking around on mountain bikes and stuff. Being a pretty outdoors oriented kid, so it was always um, it was always. Uh, there was always a risk of just falling over and bumping your head, but um, I was uh, I was always well uh, well taken care of. Be my parents or or my coaches uh, growing up. Um, coming over to France, there's uh, there's a lot of tradition about uh, you know being being strong and being uh, courageous and kind of working through uh, really trying to play through injuries. Um, we know, especially in North America. And, and I, I know now that um, it's it's when you're injured you can't play through it. Like if you're hurt, you can put, push through being hurt, but when you're injured, you have, you have to get out of the game. And a concussion is is, is no different than a twisted knee or a twisted shoulder or broken bones. You, you obviously can't play through it. Um, yeah. You need to be properly uh, properly treated, and uh, you need to take some time before you come back to the game. So um, over the years, I've had I've had I've had a few, but um, I, I think now. Um, with uh, the work that we're going to be doing, it's going to be uh, it's going to be hopefully a lot better for uh, especially a lot of kids coming through playing rugby here in France. So the rugby safe network is in Geneva, is where it's where its head headquarters are in Geneva. Uh, we we based we based our foundation in Geneva just because um, it's it's easy for us uh, in terms yeah. of European laws and um, and. Uh, and the whole setup and foundation. It's, yeah, um, it's the best place to do it. We look at maybe doing it in England and also in France, but um, France has got an uh, extremely, uh, how would you say, extremely uh, difficult bureaucracy. Okay. Uh, uh, around the around the foundations, so it's definitely a lot easier to do in France. And how is the education going for in pro sports and in international sports? I think rugby, sorry, not sports rugby. I think that's going. Well, in, in, in rugby, I think it's it's going very well. As I, I started earlier with the Place Mark campaign in uh, in Canada, that's uh, that's taking huge inroads into uh, treating this uh, extremely important issue properly. Um, this uh, it's actually being taken up by Megan and the other uh, sporting from sporting labs. It's, it's it's such a good campaign. It's such a good. Uh, Educational tool to make sure people are using, uh, are, are treating the injuries uh, as, as they should be treated. Uh, the problem is, uh, France is very, like I said, very steeped in tradition and is not um, a very education. So, trying to get this education through to end the country so people understand the risks and more by having um, concussions or head injuries properly. Uh, it's uh, it's still like uh, yelling at a brick wall. We're um, we're trying to do a lot of the the, the, the common bodies. They they realized it was a problem. But it oh, sorry, to... sorry. Could you could you repeat that last part there? Because there was a was um, really awesome. yeah. yeah, just in terms of the, the governing bodies are uh, not very uh, they're not very adept to changing quickly, and uh, that's basically what we want. It's it's the rules to be to be definitive and you need to be put out there for for people. Right now there's no concrete rules as to how to treat uh, concussion in the in the French rugby union. Um, they give it a bit of lip service, um, but when uh, somebody's put back on the field after having a concussion, there's no there's no penalty for the club or for the league or, or anybody. And that's extremely dangerous because you know these, these kids or these players are, are being put in danger. Which actually leads me well to my next question. I was saying I I've, I don't play rugby and I never really never have really, but I mean I've seen seen a lot, and I really like the uh, the interaction, the camaraderie between and respect really respect is I guess the main word I'm looking for between players, even on opposing teams, and the respect for officials. So can you talk about how can you talk about how important it is for respect for officials and players is for this for the head injury. Aspect of brain concussion injury of your aspect of, of head injury? 
that's um, that's one of the primordial parts of rugby, you know, the uh, lowest practitioner of, uh, of it's playing an extremely rough game. There's, uh, there's not violence in it, but there's, uh, there's a lot of contact and there's a lot of um, collision. It's a collision-based sport. Um, I think the fact that, that um, you really managed to get all your negative energies out on the opposition and they're carrying the ball, you can hit as hard as you can. Uh, but that creates real respect because um, it's, uh, it's, like a, it's like a little war where nobody can work, nobody dies. So um, there's, some, there's some banging bodies and uh, some good hits. And, uh, and at the end of the game, everybody shakes hands and, and that's the end of it. Yeah. And similar with the referee. As soon as the referee makes a the decision, there's no talking back, there's no disputing because you'll get marched another 10 meters in the game and uh, you'll penalize your team. So uh, you have to accept it and be respectful. And, um, I think that's, that's the biggest thing in the NLB. It's got an enormous amount of respect for, for people that play the game. And um, that's, uh, for me, uh, an extremely uh, important facet of the NLB. Yeah. So and, and internationally and professionally, it's, I've seen like, the respect is there between players. Um, so... For example, World Rugby or Rugby Canada, what are, are they? What are they doing? What do you see? Like, does see them do towards, or would do? What are they doing now? Are they working towards concussion management better? Or, do you think? Definitely, they're they're doing they're putting huge huge inroads. World Rugby is actually actually taking the point smart program from Canada, and they're implementing a lot of the similar uh, rules and, and regulations into their. World Rugby concussion protocols, um, and that's great. Um, the problem is, that for me, they're they're taking much too much time. This is something that's been on the on the, the radar for at least the last ten years, and they're only just now starting to sit down and try yeah. and hash out what it is, uh, what the rules are actually going to be. Um, I think they can probably do something like this in about a month and a half and, and get it out there, get the get it out on apps and uh, posters and books. And, uh, for, uh, for all the young players, especially to see and to, and to learn. Um, there's not much happening in France around it. There's a lot of noise, but there's nothing definitively being done. So uh, that's where, uh, again, Rugby Safety Network will be coming in and we'll be, uh, we'll be using uh, my, uh, my knowledge and, uh, and friends of mine who are, who are passionate about the subject, getting the education out there in the rugby schools and clubs and through social media as well. And, uh, and especially calling uh, to task the, uh, the, the powers of being for us for being the, the league national to, uh, to start uh, coming down on, on teams and clubs that don't respect the, the laws and uh, don't protect the players. Yeah. So are there, I mean, are there any new initiatives being taken by World, World Rugby, Rugby Canada, anybody for this Women's World Cup next summer? Or are you playing the Sorry? the women the women's World Cup next summer? Yeah. Are there any initiatives you know of that are being taken by a rugby World Cup or a World or a World Rugby or Rugby or Rugby Canada towards the women's World Cup concussion wise? I mean. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any uh, any issue with uh, with uh, with uh, the community team and how they. Uh, how we deal with concussion. Uh, World Rugby needs to uh, put out a definitive uh, rule book around it on how, and they need to enforce it. Canada, as, uh, as I said, they have their, their personal program, which is excellent. Um, they're extremely progressive in, in how they protect their players. I was coaching Canada last, uh, last year in February against the Six Nations, and uh, as soon as we see any uh, any sniff of a, a head injury, uh, our players take it off the field and uh, is under uh, care of our doctors. There's, uh, there's no, even, uh, no even question of uh, can the player come back on the field. Uh, if there's any, uh, any um, suspect of head injury, the players immediately taken out of, out, of, out of harm's way and off the field and properly treated with a doctor. And uh, I have no, no, um, no worries at all with uh, with, uh, with that for the Women's World Cup with, uh, with the Canadian team because I know their uh, our medical staff and, uh, and support staff and coaches and managers, etc. are uh, of the highest quality and, uh, and only want the best of the athlete. Yeah, yeah. Well, is there anything else you would like to mention about 
rugby safety network or or your team for even like even your on accent friends or anything you'd like to mention at, at all for that about them what they're do what they're doing towards a concussion. The doctor and the medical staff here were, uh, were totally on board with uh, uh, the, the beginning of our foundation and uh, reassuring me that they would uh, properly treat any uh, head injury with uh, my teammates and obviously me as well. Um, in terms of uh, us going forward with, uh, with RSN, we'll be, uh, we'll be really focusing most on, uh, on, on children's education because um, I think going from the top down is, uh, is, will take too much time. Uh, using uh, kids' books, um, going to rugby uh, schools, um, to rugby clubs and going through the mini rugby, so that's uh, the best way to get the message out there. And you really get the stigma away from uh, having a head injury and thinking that you're, you're not strong and you're not, you're not um, willing to, to go about go to battle with your teammates. That needs yeah. to be uh, needs to be washed away. Um, it's no different than turning and twisting your knee or breaking breaking a bone in your body. You can't push through that and you should never push through uh, a suspected hand injury. You should always be pre- properly taken care of and taken off the field of play. Um, that's unfortunately did, didn't happen to me. I was put through uh, a semi-final, I was put back on the field after the doctor said I was only able to return. He, uh, he asked me a few minutes later and I was, I, was, uh, I was allowed to replay in the game and then two weeks later I had the same thing. So uh, that type of thing, uh, for me at the highest level, um, I, was, uh, I was basically put through the ringer and then spat at the back end. Uh, hence why I had to sign, I've had to sign with a new club. But I couldn't imagine uh, this happening to uh, a young rugby player um, and uh, the poor, a poor fellow and our girl uh, had to go through it. Much like what happened to, to poor uh, Ron Stringer, uh, the poor girl, uh, she passed away uh, after um, some uh, head injury problems during a uh, weekend rugby tournament. Yeah, in Ottawa, um, right? You know, no, no, that's right. And no, uh, no one should ever die playing a, a sport for their life. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's just, uh, to me, it's, it's unheard of. And uh, it's unfortunate for her with uh, the education we out there. But um, we'll definitely be working hard so that uh, something like that, as well as that, never happens again. Yeah, I think that's a good. And uh, to give more more presence to to your, uh, if anybody listening, if uh, to, to Rugby Safety Network RSN, how can they find you on Twitter, Instagram, or the web? How do they find you? Yeah. Well, we have our website, Rugby Safety Network, as well on Twitter and RSN. Um, we've, uh, we'll be registering our, our foundation definitively here in the next uh, month or two. Um, and, uh, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be out, uh, hopefully, in the uh, World Rugby Conference in London next month. Um, we'll be going everywhere. I'll be starting with, with some. Uh, some Education seminars with Rugby Canada when they're here in Europe. Uh, unfortunately, I can't play as I'm just coming back from injuries from a broken hand and, uh, and, a, and a torn calf. So uh, I'm not oh, unfortunately yeah. out, of, out, of, uh, out of commission for Canada, which uh, breaks my heart. But yeah. uh, that's, the, um, that's, that's how the way she goes in yeah. sports sometimes to get injured. But um, we'll definitely be using our time uh, to get the message out there with Rugby Canada, with uh, the local rugby, uh, any rugby teams around uh, the, my general vicinity here in the east of France and uh, start to, uh, to really get the message out there. Uh, that's good. That's good. That's, that's great. So your, I'll try to do your Twitter address is at RSN or at Rugby at, Safety Network. Uh, rugby, at Rugby Safety Network. At Rugby uh, Safety Network. And do you have a Facebook page or a, or a website to mention? No, no, just um, just just those two. The, the website will be up and up going here soon. Okay. And you know, once the foundation is fully fully registered, then 
Yeah, I'll be out uh, running uh, educational seminars uh, around France. Around France? Educational seminars around France soon, you'll be. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thank you, James. There's, a, there's hopefully people listening to this will look, no, no, look, look to find you and, and hopefully recognize that this is an important issue in not just North American sports, but in rugby as well. So thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you again to Jamie. Please check out their foundation on Twitter at Rugby Safety Net. A website is coming. Also, I will be speaking at Dalhousie School of Physiotherapy on Wednesday, November 23rd in the morning. And I will have his live on Concussion Talks Facebook page. I will be talking about my brain injury, its challenges, and the steps I've taken to face those challenges. I hope you can tune in. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast, and I hope you'll listen again soon. As always, the music at the beginning of this podcast is by Ben Sound, www.bensound.com.